made it to Shana port which is basically uh, the pier or port that uh, that goes to Masira Island it's on the mainland side obviously and uh, two separate functions for this port pretty much the ferry to get across to Masera so you can see like trucks behind me here um, fish and ice trucks all the supplies that the island needs will come from this port there's two separate ferry systems back in the day there was only one uh, now they've got the NFC which is the national ferries company which are these more modern ones they stick to a schedule you can purchase tickets online with them which is quite handy I've always just preferred going with the local stuff so you can see the difference between the ferries and I always prefer the local stuff because sometimes it's actually quicker and then you can see on this side is the local ferries run and owned by local people this is how they've been doing it for years and it's a little bit cheaper and they basically leave when they're full the other use for this port is obviously fishing so there's there's fishing dows everywhere here like like literally hundreds this area of the coastline between sort of the point of Russell Hyde and Tukum is Oman's major fishing industry it's a fascinating place Shana port this must be the 50th time that I've been here and every time I come here I'm, I'm somewhat bedazzled by this strange and wonderful place southernmost point of Masera Island and uh, I'm here at the beginning of August and it's right in the heart of the Kharif which is the monsoon season the southerly winds that rush up the coast and this sea is raging there's just no way you can get a boat or even yourself in the water yeah, you, this is so dangerous I mean as far as my eyes can see I can see rogue waves breaking you know, three, four nautical miles out. And there's a good three, four meter swell running. I'm sure the camera doesn't do it any justice. It's massive. I mean, that wave out there, that's a 15 foot wave breaking a mile out. I don't know how much fishing I'm going to be able to do on this trip. I have to find some lee shores and some secluded areas. Wow. You would literally be taking your life in your hands if you got in the water here. Pretty crazy. I'm walking on the, the most northern eastern point of the island of Masira. And obviously on the northern part of the island is where the big military base is. Um, so this is actually the, the last public beach that you can actually get to before it becomes the Air Force Base. And you can actually see the wall next to me here this is the boundary of the military base and this military base uh, is now Royal Oman Air Force but uh, it actually started in World War II times where the British used to use this as a tactical you know geographically tactical Air Force base um, and then it became American uh, they subcontracted out to an American military force that used to occupy area here and actually there's been some quite important um, operations run from this military base it's quite interesting um, what what I'm interested in is to try and fish you know you can't access the northern part of the island you, you just can't get in here this is totally but with a boat if I launched the boat here and went around with the boat there's places there that nobody really fishes because it's a military base spoken to a few Omani guys today and they all say that it's okay if you've got a boat you can go and fish but you're just not allowed to be on the land and you can actually see here there's big signs the sign says 
Warning, Royal Air Force of Oman, Masira Air Base. This is a protected area according to the Royal Decree. Just beautiful. Sure. I've just launched on the northern side of Masera, the northwestern side. Behind me is the, the harbor for the ferries and in front of me is the military base. It seems like the weather's playing its part until about two o'clock. So I guess let's see how it goes. So I'm pretty excited to see the northern part of the island. It's only like 2.2 miles away. And actually one of the fishermen I just spoke to now said, and there's great barracuda fishing there, so let's go check it out. It's a very interesting, just spoke to a bunch of the local guys. Seems to be a good blend between Bangladeshi and Amani fishermen here. We're right on the northern point of the island, just before the wind comes at midday. What these guys are doing is they're drifting up wind and they're drifting over these long sandbanks and they're catching cuttlefish. So if you imagine a giant chocker jig with a weight on it and they drag it along the bottom and they drift down and they, and they catch. And he was just saying to me that they catch about 15 kilos a day, which is, I mean, a nice cuttlefish is probably about a kilo, maybe a kilo and a half. So they catch 10 or 15 cuttlefish a day and that's their living. It's quite amazing. And such friendly guys like, I'm trying to give them like some chips or some Pepsis or something and they end up giving me a Pepsi, you know. <laughs> There's a difference to the Omani people here on Masera. Well, at least the local people, you know. There's a kindness and there's a genuineness here to the people here. It's unmistakable. You, you, you have to recognize it. The wind is starting to pick up now. So I'm trying to run more inshore. This pier here at the northern part of Masera, uh, this is the fuel docking pier for the Air Force Base. So ships come and tie up here and discharge fuel. There's no signage in saying you can't fish or anything, and there's Amani fishing boats all over here fishing. So they obviously don't mind that people fish here. I'm just wondering can you dive here? Can you get in with a spear gun? Because I bet you underneath this pier there's some bombs. I don't know. I don't know if I've got the balls to do it, but it's, it would be pretty cool, I must admit. Just a little uh, spoon. It's nice uh, because it's weighted that I can control it so I can let it sink. I can work the mid-water bottom and the top water with it. It's a, it's a perfect little device to sort of reconnaissance an area. Anyhow, I haven't, got, I haven't even seen a fish yet, so... All the Mani guys look like they're just catching cuttlefish, so... I think I've found something really interesting here. Um, sort of halfway down the island in the south, I'm looking for an old airfield that uh, used to be controlled by the British in the Second World War. So what I think this is, is a, a target practice area. You can see, like gigantic bullet holes I mean look at the size of these bullet holes this is like 50 caliber weapons that have that have made these holes so planes come in here for target practice shooting bombing and you can see look at the like shrapnel lying around here it's incredible like whatever's hit this like has just obliterated it's incredible very cool find I've never actually seen something like this <coughs> like a target practice area for the air force i mean shit that's that's a bomb right i mean that's a i can't believe how heavy this thing is i don't know how safe surely i mean
That's a bomb. That was dropped out of an aircraft. <sighs> Incredible the damage that whatever these aircraft are shooting. I mean, I don't know military grade weapons or armaments or anything like that. But I can imagine whatever hit that is huge caliber rounds, you know. Or maybe shrapnel, like a bomb that goes off and just rips through everything. It's pretty cool. Devastating. Imagine being inside that thing when they're shooting at it. Island, which is right across there um, it's a big island of uh, it's Mazara's biggest island and it's a breeding ground or a nesting ground for a bunch of different species of birds and friends of mine have managed to um, find a guy an Amani guy that owns a, a little lodge behind me and he's gonna take us out on his boat today to the island but uh, in my experience there's at least 25 knots of wind maybe even more maybe even 30 knots of wind running through this channel and this is the boat that's going to do it for us <laughs> very exciting we're crossing the channel now and there must be at least 25 knots of wind here we're in a 20 foot little boat with a 40 horsepower motor and we're trying to get across all, all the other people that were supposed to come with us bailed the weather's too bad but I'm so keen so Salim's taking me to Bird Island Mazera. We're about to land on uh, Bird Island here so we safely made it across the channel <laughs> but wet. You okay Salim? Hi. I guess we're gonna go for a long hike and see what's what. So my first impression of Bird Island, Mazera is the trash. Wow, there is a lot of trash on this island. Goes to show you, it doesn't take, you know, it's not just people throwing their litter, it's actually just the sea bringing the litter to a place like this that's so abandoned. So we walk into the other side of the island, which is far. I've got it at two kilometers. <laughs> All the way down there. Listen to that. And look at all their eggs here. Just thousands and thousands and thousands of eggs. And this is a much smaller bird. It looks like a sea swallow. And they seem to all breed together in like bunches, whereas the bigger bird breeds they spread their nests up but these guys I mean there must be 10 nests within two meters squared here so it seems that the sea swallow look at the shape of the egg how unique it is this one feels empty so it seems that uh, on the western side of the island which is the mainland side it seems that this side of the island is a mangrove you can see behind me brilliant that side of the island is like little cliffs beaches and this side is a mangrove and in the middle is this huge deserted area like a salt flat with all the, the nests it's very cool Salim says that this name of this island in Arabic is actually called Marsis Island in English we call it Bird Island all right so Bird Island done Thank you, Mr. Salim, that was excellent. Welcome.